John Heist. I think that's how you say his name. John Heist. Hi, I am Nicky Clements, and I used to make stuff like this. ago, John Heisch, a woodworker with several channels here on YouTube, released a brief shop tour video on his Scrappin' channel. And in that video, he did this. I don't have a 360 degree camera, but I do have a camera that I can spin around 360 degrees. So that's what this video is going to be. Me turning the camera around slowly so you can see the shop. Not just panning the camera around in his shop definitely got the job done and showed us what it needed to, but upon seeing that, I thought it really shouldn't be that hard to extract an actual panoramic image from that video. After all, that's pretty much what your phone does when you take one. You just slowly pan the phone, and then the app stitches that movement into a static image. So fairly easily, I was able to take his 360 video and turn it into this. A seamless 360 panorama that you can navigate through at your leisure. So let's hop on the computer and I'll show you how I did it. So first things first, get the video off YouTube. Now YouTube really doesn't support downloading videos off of their platform. Even if a creator is giving you permission to download their video, it's still kind of against the rules. Even downloading your own videos off YouTube can be problematic, especially if you've uploaded a video with copyrighted material, YouTube will no longer give you the option to download it. So I'll leave you to discern how this YouTube video was downloaded. All right, so with the video downloaded, I'm not gonna open it in Adobe Premiere. Now, if you don't have Adobe Premiere or Adobe Photoshop, which we'll be using next, it is still possible to do all of this, but the amount of work that it'll take without those softwares might really not make it worth it. For instance, you could extract the frames from the video using VLC Player, which has a take snapshot filter, which will allow you to extract frames from the video. So you could go through the video, pausing, taking a snapshot, playing a little bit further, taking another snapshot, or assign a hotkey to the snapshot function and then just tap it every few seconds through the video. Or don't even bother downloading the video and just take screenshots. But we're gonna make really quick work of all that using Adobe Premiere. So I'll start by importing my footage into Adobe Premiere. We'll right click, create a new sequence from clip, and then I'm gonna isolate the section that I wanna convert into still images. With the video isolated, I'm now going to speed it up so it's only about one second long. Now with the video sped up, I'm just going to export it as an image sequence, which will give us all the frames we need to make our panoramic. Let's choose JPEG. And there we have it, our video converted into a bunch of frames that we can now stitch together in Photoshop. Now of course you could stitch all these photos together manually, but Photoshop actually has a way to pretty much fully automate the process. Go to File, Automate, and Photo Merge. We could leave it on Auto, but I'm going to choose Cyndrical, and then browse for our files. Select our 25, 26 images, click OK and tell Photoshop to go ahead. And there we go. With almost no effort, we got a really great result, but there is a bit of cleanup work to do. First, I'm just gonna merge this all into one layer. And now I'm going to use Content-Aware Fill to fill in the gaps created by the warping. There, and that looks really good. All right, so the last step to do is make it an actual 360 panorama. That's so that if you put it in a 360 viewer, the left and the right edge will actually meet up and there'll be no seam. And to do that, we basically just copy the left side over to the right side. As you can see, we have a decent chunk of the image that is repeating. And I think I'm going to go right here on the edge of the cabinet, which is a nice straight line that'll help hide, that'll help hide the seam even more. Is now we simply take this chunk, copy, paste, 
and we slide it over here. Now this is one of my favorite techniques in Photoshop and I use it very frequently. And it's great for lining up the same object from two different sources. So of course you can just reduce the opacity, which will then let you see both images at the same time. But to take it a step further, you invert it. Now since both images are the same, the closer you get them together, the grayer the image will become. And if you can get the image to go completely 50% gray, then you know that you've aligned the images perfectly. So we'll zoom in a bit. And it actually gives it like an emboss filter effect. We'll stretch it out, stretch it in just a bit. And that's fairly good. So we'll uninvert it, put it back to 0%, 100% opacity. And now we'll just feather it so it blends in with the rest of the image, being careful not to affect the far right portion so it'll still line up with the left. All right, that looks really good. Now we just have to crop it and we're left with a seamless 360 panoramic of John's workshop. Now the only thing left to do is upload it somewhere that has an interactive panoramic viewer. I found a website called easypano.com to be fairly decent and they also appear to have their own stitching software. So if you don't have Adobe Photoshop, you could use their software or a similar program to try and achieve the same results. So while I do think this is a cool technique, I don't see the demand for making panoramic images from video as being very high, especially when it's so easy to make them on your smartphone, and the fact that 360 cameras are becoming increasingly more popular. However, this technique could be good for creating images from virtual sources. Perhaps there's an area in Google Earth that you'd like a panoramic image of, or maybe from a video game. So let's give that a try. Hey, what's up my knickknacks? It's your boy Nikki D. Welcome back to another episode of Subnautica. Okay, today... No. There is and will be a lot of different types of content on this channel, but I can all but guarantee Let's Plays will not be one of them. Definitely not. Probably not. Maybe not. Maybe. Possibly. Potentially. Absolutely. Anyway, let's just get into the game and see if we can find an area that'd be cool to create a 360 panoramic from. Alright, this spot looks good enough as any. So let's turn off the HUD. Oh, look at that, we can even get rid of the hands. So that's really nice. Now there is still a lot of movement going on, so it will be interesting to see, you know, what kind of result we get with the stitch. But let's just try and really evenly and slowly rotate around. All right, I think I got something. It'll be interesting to see if that works.
Well, I'm actually really impressed. That worked way better than I thought it would. I think we got a really good result. So yeah, it is definitely possible to create panoramic images from your favorite parts in a video game. Yeah, I really thought with the movement of the water and the light rays and the fish coming in and out, we'd get a lot of weird artifacting, but it spliced together perfectly. I can't even see any weird spots or glitches. And we had a lot more warping since my rotation was going up and down, but Content Aware Phil did a really great job filling in all those voids. Now, of course, if you can't actually record your video game, most games do have a screenshot function, so you could, of course, take a screenshot, turn a little bit, take another screenshot, and compile your panoramic images from those, but it would be quite a bit of work. But maybe this will catch on, and you could just hit a button, and it'll actually export a full panoramic or a full 360 sphere of the area you're standing at in your game. I hope you had fun with that one and maybe learned something. My sincere thank you for watching. Once again, I am Nick D. Clements. If you're wondering, Nick is short for Nicholas and the D stands for Damien. Anyway, I'm off to make something else. Yeah, the community for this channel, totally calling you guys my knickknacks.